Hey there, my name is Gabriel and in this video we'll show you how I shot this beautiful b-roll. First, a pre-story. A few weeks ago I went back to Sofia, Bulgaria to fix some documents. And in Bulgaria there are so many pretty girls that it would be stupid from my side not to organize something. Because I didn't have much time to search for models and place where to shoot, I contacted Cvetkov, a fellow photographer who is just building his studio in Sofia. So if you're coming to Sofia and you wanna shoot, you can just ping him in Instagram. For this bureau there are two big problems which I had to overcome. The first one, our gorgeous model has really huge boobies and we are shooting quite open. I wanted the video to look elegant and sexy but not to go in the vulgar direction. When you have a halfly naked girl with big boobies it is very easy to cross the border. So we had to play a lot with the angles and the choreograph some of the moves. The second problem was the studio itself. It is under construction and it's more or less four walls. To compensate for that we played with the lights. We added blue and red filters and fortunately those were flashes and the modeling light wasn't strong enough. So I had to crank the ISO. If you don't know what I'm talking about there are two types of lights, you have continuous and you have flashlight. This studio is built for photography, not for videography, so the lights are not strong enough for videos. The second very important thing when you shoot on plain background is the model. When the environment is not so interesting, the whole attention falls on the person in front of the camera. So I tried to make the whole video in constant movement. Now let's check the equipment I used for that shoot. Ronin S, Canon EOS R, 16-35, 2.8, and 35mm 1.8 macro. My camera settings were 50 frames per second, shutter speed 1 100th of a second, the aperture was 2.8 or 1.8. If you're wondering why I'm shooting B-rolls in 50 frames per second, it is because Canon didn't provide me the option to shoot in 120 frames per second. Don't even make me start on that. And my ISO was between 800 and 2000. Now let's check how I filmed it. The first one is the establishing shot, I wanted to show where we are and what are we doing. I shot it on a gimbal in FPV mode. The FPV mode allows you to move the gimbal in all directions and the movement looks very sleek. I finished the shot with black screen and the idea was to start the next one with how she is taking off her shoe. In my mind I had the crazy idea of how the shoe will fly over the camera and it will look awesome. In the end I removed that scene from the final bureau, here is how it looked. Maybe it would look better if it was recorded in 120 fps but I'm just guessing. Next we are going to the spicy part taking off the pants. I wanted to give more intimate feeling without showing a lot of skin. For that shot I switched to my 35mm 1.8 macro lens. The main focal point here is the untying the pants. I shot the whole bureau in autofocus. To avoid the camera focus hunting while I'm doing the intro movement, I'm using the eye off button. So adjust the camera, focus and then press the IF OFF button and do the introducing movement. When you work with a macro lens the focusing is 3 times slower so if the camera loses focus it takes it forever to find it back. So when you film you have two options. Film it only in manual, that is how the pro pro guys are doing it but I'm lazy as so I shoot in hybrid mode. I use the IF OFF button when I need it, like that I don't have to worry about my subject distance all the time. In that way I can focus more on the other parts of the shoot. The next shot is my favorite one, I wanted the video to have the feeling that you're there with her. I told her to grab the camera, do a few steps back and push me away and it turned out great, it feels she's holding you. The next scene was the bra takeoff. Here was very tricky and we reshooted it many times. I filmed it in two parts. First one is how she is unbuttoning. And the second is how she turns and covers the lens. I wanted to do the black screen transition again. When you don't know which transition to do, just do a black screen transition. It always works. Just don't do it all the time. But you don't get that My 
Now the difficulty here was when she was turning not to show too much boobies. Believe me, when they are big it is hard to show less, it's easier to show more. Here I already shot everything that I planned, so decided to experiment and take a few more macro shots of her mouth, eyes, hands. It's always better to shoot more and not use the footage than to shoot less and not to have the footage. While experimenting we did one of the sexiest shots. It is very important to work with the model and to experiment. Sometimes the best shots are coming from experimenting. Next we did some photos with the balloons and it was time to finish. The whole scene was already set up so I used the moment and took several takes. I didn't do a perfect job here, I regret not spending a bit more time and shooting it better. To finish the video I needed two more shots, one transition of the last scene and an outro. To make the transition I gave her my hoodie so she has something to play with. It always looks better when you have some probe and something is happening. For the closing shot I really didn't know what to be and what to do, so we recorded it several times. As you can see I forgot to turn off the auto white balance. What I usually do and I did in the beginning of that shoot is to set up the light balance with a grey card. This one is was too light by Manfrotto, I'm really happy with it. It looks like that. The idea is very simple, you take one picture with the grey card and with that picture you set up the white balance on the camera. I did it, but I forgot to switch the settings from auto white balance to manual. Unfortunately, that is a mistake which I do very, very often, and I have to start checking the settings better. Okay. So, shooting in an empty studio is hard, but still, you can produce some awesome stuff. Now, let's move on to the sound design. In general sound design is very time consuming, and I didn't want to waste too much time with that video, so I just put the sound design on the most important moments, the one which will enhance the video. Now, finding the perfect sound which is matching the action is really hard because the online libraries, they have a lot of sounds but they don't have sounds for everything. So sometimes you have to substitute. Here are three examples which sounds I used. For untying the pants, I used the sound of tennis shoe string. Now, a very important moment here is that I slow down the sound. You watch the video twice slower, so I slow down the sound as well. When you're watching slow motion, the sound is completely different. For the push I used whoosh sound, it fitted perfectly. And for unclipping the bra I used the clipboard clip sound. You know, in real life no bra will clip like that, but still there is some sound. Another very often question about the sound is from where do you get the sounds. I use Epidemic Sound, I'm paying for it, it's not sponsored. But unfortunately Epidemic Sound is not that rich library for sounds. So around 20% of the time I'm using Google, 80% of the time I'm using Epidemic Sound and 20% I'm using Google. Here is the full clip, before I play it, don't forget to press the like button, subscribe and see you in the next video.
if I still strive.